Hey, how's it going? My name is Tom Cassidy. I'm here at Distortions Unlimited in Greeley, Colorado. Today we're going to be doing a monster lab on how I approach sculpting scales. Now a couple of things before we get started. It's very cool being here at Distortions. It's uh, really kind of coming full circle for me. I was always very into uh, sculpting monsters and creatures growing up. Never really thought that there could be a career in it for me. Now I had a very uh, I'm not sure what the word you would want to say. Just a frustrated ceramics teacher in high school who was just, you know, getting very upset over the fact that every project that was coming from me was a monster or a creature of some sort. And I remember she said something along the lines of, if you want to be an artist, you can't make monsters. Now around the same time, the Making Monsters TV show had uh, just come out on the Travel Channel. So here are these people in ironically my home state because I'm from Colorado that are making monsters for a living after I was just told that that was impossible. This uh, did help me inspire, did help inspire me to uh, get on the track that I have a little bit and that after the Making Monsters uh, TV show, after starting to watch a few episodes, I went out and tried to make my first latex mask and I really enjoyed that. Then I started really looking into, okay, so there's these practical effects artists and makeup artists and, you know, animatronics. There's just really so much stuff. And uh, the monster industry is very vast. And the reason I want to say this is because, you know, this, the monster lab idea is just such a fun thing. And if there's anybody out there that is just hanging around, um, you know, wanting to make monsters, but not going out and directly trying to make money off of it, it's... It's doable. I've done it and anybody else can do it. And you know, it's really crazy because I moved out to Los Angeles about a year and a few months ago. I had only been sculpting for two or three years up to that point. And for the last eight or nine months, I've been sculpting professionally. So being able to come back and sculpt for distortions has been very cool coming full circle. I've got a uh, pterodactyl in the background that we may take a look at a little bit which is why we're going to be doing the scale tutorial today. Now, the other thing I want to say before we get started is to keep in mind that scales are not skin. That is the biggest thing that I personally have found in trying to do convincing scales is that they are a surface and a growth on top of skin. So you want to keep in mind that there's skin underneath it and there are going to be folds underneath it and different, you know, there, there's lots of layers to it. And that's typically, if you keep that in mind, that's how you're going to get the most convincing scales. So here we have the uh, finished piece. This is kind of what I'm going to be showing you how to uh, sculpt today. And let's get started. <laughs> So, you want to start with a relatively smooth surface. If you have a couple rake marks or anything like that, it's not going to make a huge difference. Sometimes it can add a little nice secondary form once it gets smoothed out. The most important thing is reference, especially, you know, anything that you're trying to mimic life, you want to have reference. So, here we just have a, a nice alligator scale pattern. I believe this is on the uh, side of the alligator near the stomach. And what I like to do with scales is I'll like to take one picture that's the actual scales and then I'll take another one, same picture, and I'll go in and really, you know, draw out and take a look at all of the different folds in between the scales. And that is going to be our starting point. Now I'm going to start things off with a Kemper W21. This is my personal favorite tool for scale work and just really any detail. But you're really just going to want to carve in these little thought lines that we have going on here. I believe it was Brian Wade who I first heard that term from. He has a wonderful uh, video of him sculpting a creature from the Black Lagoon Sioux on YouTube, which is where I got a lot of these techniques from. So you're just gonna wanna you know, keep it organic, not too straight, maybe make them connect a little bit and branch back down, but all having the general same directionality. Thank you. 
One of the things to keep in mind is, again, the direction and the flow of the scales. So you'll notice that all of these scales that I'm uh, starting to block in are all kind of coming down this way where the uh, typically the smallest part of the scale will be coming down here. The largest part will be going up that way. But if you want to break that rule every now and then, that's a good idea. It will help things stay organic. And nature is perfect because it is imperfect. So really, don't put too much thought into this. Just keep an idea of what you want to do and go for it. So as we're getting over here, where the lines are getting a little bit closer together and the scales are getting a little bit smaller, I'm going to start putting in a couple of lines that are going in a different direction than the base ones that we've put out. Now doing this is going to get you a much more soft feeling scale, and when I say that, I mean in the sense that, you know, these scales are going to feel very hard and chitinous like a uh, armor. The scales over here, I want it to transition into a more fleshy, you know, um, more flexible scale. And to do that, you know, you're just going to have more of these uh, little wrinkles in between the scales, smaller scales. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a round loop tool and I'm going to go in and these little areas in between the scales I'm going to start sinking in. Now this comes back to what I was talking to in the beginning of the video and the fact that scales are not skin, scales are something on top of the skin. So what I'm doing in here is I am sinking the skin back so it has that depth like these things are just sitting on top of the skin and just, you know, kind of growing out of it. And even though it might look like I'm knocking this back pretty far right now, as we get further along in this process, it will tie in together a little more, kind of like in this picture. Now the scales are all raised slightly and the skin behind it, all these little, you know, triangular and fun shapes in between the scales is sunken a little bit lower, but not too much. I'm over exaggerating it, but that is something that is going to be fixed later. So I'm not too worried about it right now. So now that we have all of these shapes in between the scales sunken down a little bit, I'm using isopropyl alcohol to smooth this out because when you're using water, the clay will really start to soak it up. Now that's going to make the clay mushy and you don't really want super mushy clay when you're doing detail work like this. So I'm using isopropyl alcohol because it will evaporate out of the clay quite a bit faster than water would. So I'm just spraying that down, spraying the brush to relieve any surface tension. It's going to help it not really pick up too much clay in the beginning. And you know, let's go over, work it around. I think maybe a little bit more might not be a bad idea. And I'll typically do this in circles because what we're trying to do here is round off the edge of every single scale. And as you'll notice, the uh, little slurry that's forming is starting to sink into the cracks in between the scales. Now, there's a, uh, we're going to get rid of that in a second here, and I'll show you how that's done. But right now, I'm not worried about that. I'm just focusing on making sure these scales are nice and round. All right, so I think that's good. Now, the way we're going to get rid of this slurry that has sunken into the cracks a little bit is just taking the isopropyl alcohol and, again, blasting it. And what that's going to do is the uh, clay that has mixed with the alcohol that's sunken in between these scales, 
the alcohol is just gonna break that down even more and really blast it away. And you'll use a lot of alcohol doing this method. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, so I think this is a good consistency. I'm not sure exactly how to describe it to you, but you don't want it to be too hard. You don't want it to be too soft either. So it's really just practice and finding the balance that you like most. Now what I'm gonna do here is just brush some baby powder onto this. What that is going to do is relieve the uh, tack that is on the surface of the clay. So as I keep carving into this, it's not gonna wanna stick to itself. And what I'm gonna do next is just take that Kemper W21 again and go in and redefine the edge of each scale. Now we're gonna take some more isopropyl alcohol, not quite as much this time, and just smooth it out a little bit more. This is a lot of doing scales is typically just a lot of back and forth going in, redefining them, smoothing them out, redefining them and smoothing them out. Now this time, instead of blasting that away, I'm going to take a sponge. It's a little damp, that's all right. And I'm just gonna kinda brush off some of that excess, maybe tap it in a little bit. I think that's about what we're looking for. So, dry it out again. Now, like I said, you know, we're going for uh, two different types of scales that are transitioning into one another with this. And these hard armory ones, which are uh, on alligators called osteoderms, you see that they uh, have these little peaks on them that slowly disappear as they get into the softer scales. So that is pretty simple. All it is is just rolling up a little worm of clay and pinching it onto the scale. And obviously the bigger the scale is, the bigger you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna make these little worms. Smaller the scale is, smaller the worm. And as we start getting over here, what I'm gonna do is start making these things a little sporadic. It's not gonna be on every scale. And they're gonna get smaller and smaller regardless of the size of the scale. All right, so now that we have that going on, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take a combination of another Kemper wooden wire tool. This one is the W25, the uh, nice little number nine shape on the tip. And then I believe this is either a Kemper or a Ken's tool. I'm not sure exactly which, but it's just a uh, small loop rake that's got a nice little angle to the tip. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start getting close to the edge of the scale and just bringing that in to create a sort of rippling effect because although these scales are hard, they are not, you know, they're still organic material and organic material moves. So as these things are getting closer to each other, the edges are gonna kind of press up and dimple a little bit. And this is a, uh, you know, it's, it's just very, It'll help the scale feel a little more convincing. Just taking a sponge, going over it a little bit, 
help clear off some of that excess alcohol so that we can go in and dry it out again. You can see we're already getting pretty close to the finished product. For this next step, you're really going to want it to be nice and dry, you know, not bone dry. There still needs to be moisture in the clay, but you want, you're, you're going to want it to be pretty firm because we're going to go in and really start doing some fine, fine detail. So baby powder at first, go in and pick out scales, keep those lines real thin now. And I'm going to just show you this on one part and then go and do it over the whole thing. So we've got the edges of the scales redefined. Now the one thing that is gonna make your scales as natural and convincing as possible is when you look at the scales here, you can see there's these nice little triangle shapes of skin. Uh, that's, you know, it's, it's the skin that's sitting underneath the scales. And there's just these nice triangular folds going in and they're triangles, but they're all rounded. So we're gonna start doing that. One of the best ways to do that is to just continue the edge of the scale into that surface a little bit and create some fun shapes. Really, you know, try to think about how the skin might be moving around underneath it. This is reptilian skin. It's still very dry and cracked not necessarily cracked, it's, it's, a, it's very wrinkly. And it will almost have the appearance of more scales underneath it. But we're just going in, picking those out, and dividing them a little bit to give it a nice natural feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this all over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, uh, I believe it's just called a uh, skin texture tool. I forget who the uh, maker is, but it's just, you know, one of these guys with three prongs. I have two different versions of them. I have a very thick one that I'll use for very, very heavy wrinkles. And then, you know, this thinner one that's got a lot more spring to it for very fine stuff. Now these guys are really cool because as you drag them across, they're just going to bounce around on the shapes and in between the shapes. I'm just gonna, you know, hit it from a few directions, keeping in mind the direction of the scales, just adding a little extra texture on top of everything. All right, so this uh, was the breakdown of how I go about doing this scale technique. Now again, you can apply this to any really type of scale. You know, you may add in a few extra steps, a few extra details, but this is how I'll uh, typically go start to finish when I'm doing scales my way. Hope you guys enjoyed this Monster Lab video, and I hope that I uh, helped teach you something along the way. This is a work in progress pterodactyl mask that I've been doing at Distortions for a, um, History Museum, they're having a pterosaur exhibit and wanted a guy walking around in a nice pterodactyl mask. And I'm showing you this because you can see some of the uh, scale techniques that I just showed you in this video being applied to an actual piece.